Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagan Radian here at the United States Institute of Peace to cover the EU's annual Common Security and Defense Policy Conference uh, here in Washington, D.C. It's in partnership with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, and we're honored to have with us Portugal's uh, Defense Minister, Jose uh, Alberto de Azeredo Lopes, if I perfect. got that correct. I didn't want to call perfect. you bitter by accident <laughs> uh, because uh, we were talking about how, how, uh, how uh, sweet you are. Um, I want to take you from the NATO uh, ministerial. We, we just had that meeting. Uh, a lot of concerns transatlantically about whether the alliance is going to deliver that message of unity that's going to be key in, in part to deterring uh, the Russians. From your standpoint, you were at the meeting. Do you think that it was productive and do you think that there will be a message of unity from the alliance later this year in Brussels? Yes, I think and I believe so because if I didn't believe uh, it would be a very huge problem that we were facing. I'm very optimistic but nevertheless uh, I cannot ignore that there are some issues separating us. Uh, the, 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 the budgetary investment is one of them. Uh, other issues not connecting direct, directly with defense are also making uh, uh, us or certain of us believing that there are difficulties uh, in front of us. But I believe that uh, mostly in the summit we are going to give a strong message of unity. I believe and Portugal believes that it's true that we have to respect our commitments on budgetary, a bigger budgetary commitment. Uh, we did so in Wales, we did so in Warsaw, and so we must be coherent with what were our commitments. But we also think that uh, uh, defense and our common defense, our common values, our transatlantic bond cannot be reduced to 2% or not 2%. I think it's much more than this. We have a common history, we have common adversaries, we have common views on global security and defense issues. I think it would be a disgrace to reduce everything to money and I think it would be a disgrace not to respect some of our obligations under this perspective. Both, both are true, both have to be more articulated so that we transmit a message, as you said, a very important message of unity. If we, we go to a summit and we end this summit transmitting something different, to say it diplomatically, I think this would be a disaster and mostly I think that would be this would be a reinforcement of the morale and of the attitude of our adversaries. Um, let me take you to the EU uh, Defense Fund. You articulately uh, spoke about that uh, a little while ago. Um, from a Portuguese perspective, why is this defen defense fund so important? Because we've seen an increase in Portuguese defense spending, but it's also been very, very tough given the economic challenges the country faced for so long and is, and is coming out of them. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the importance of that EU connection as a NATO and an EU nation. Uh, we, you, you are speaking not really about money and about uh, an European defense fund. This European defense fund, to be valuable must be an instrument and not the final purpose of anything. And I think that as we are trying to build a common security and defense policy, and if we believe that we must be uh, reinforcing our strategic autonomy, but we have to do this in full coherence with our quality and membership in NATO, I think that the European Defense Fund can be a good contribution to reinforce our investment and then to, 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 to try to, to arrive to this goal of 2% and to do it in a more integrated way and to make a reflection on what are the shortfalls of the European Union, there are several, what is the way of reinforcing our interoperability and to be more efficient in spending money. And if you can develop a system of creating projects of research and development and lately afterwards of production and if you have to work with several states, this is one of the conditions, and if you have to involve companies of different countries, I think that we can do this with this market-oriented uh, approach be more useful than uh, mere and simple declarations of love and political declarations on the unity. So this unity can be more strong and more coherent if we associate this political objective 
to a market-oriented approach. And I think this is the way we should interpret this European Fund on Defence. Uh, contrarily to what I've heard, we are not speaking of an Eldorado. We are speaking at the most per year of uh, five and a half billion euros. Uh, it's a huge amount of money, but when you compare with defence budgets, you must uh, integrate this in a much larger approach on defence. And this is a carrot, a very interesting carrot to promote our way of working together, but this is not an Eldorado for anyone. Um, let me let me ask you um, one last question on uh, uh, Portuguese military deployments, 1,000 troops associated with missions. Talk to us from a smaller country's perspective about the necessity and the challenges associated with mounting so many military operations, some of which are in Portuguese interest, but others are in European and NATO interest. Uh, Portugal has a long tradition of being involved in a very operational approach of his armed forces. So we have always had, but we are clearly reinforcing this dimension of our, our armed forces abroad. So we are involved in naval missions, for instance in Sofia from the European Union, but also in Sea Guardian from, from NATO. We are involved in Operation Atlanta. We are commanding the mission of the European Union in Central African Republic. We are the quick reaction force of the MINUSCA in the same country and we are fighting every day and risking every day the lives of our military and so uh, what we say is that we are a small country but we have very strong capacities uh, on mobility on agility of our land forces we have a very good record on our naval missions because we are a maritime country since uh, since uh, uh, the, the the 15th century and so we try to be more efficient knowing always that it's useless to invest money if you don't have the competencies to use it in an operational way and i think that we can give lessons to some friends that are asking us to spend more money and forget that we are contributing decisively in different theaters to the peace and safety of the world. One last question. You mentioned uh, Russia, for example, um, and that discord would give a victory to the Russians. There are those analysts who are afraid that Russia will take this opportunity of discord to get up to no good. Is that a concern that you have as a NATO defense minister, that discord will give Russia an opportunity to do um, something maybe not as serious as Ukraine, but something that will test the alliance? No, because we are going to give this message of unity. So this scenario will not exist. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you so much. We really pleasure. appreciate it.